today. Hmm? Now then, the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, now that we know that Dajjal is the mastermind, which explains the reality of the world today. The Prophet said that the last people to come out to Dajjal will be women. And that a man would have to return to his family, to his home, and tie down, meaning coercively restrain his wife, sister, daughter, to protect them from being seduced by Dajjal. Now, we would know when women are coming out to Dajjal. We would know. How would we know? He said that women would be dressed and yet be naked. And I understand that it's already happening here in Saibajaya. Yeah. I'm reliably informed. That women would be dressed and yet be naked. He also said that women would dress like men. He therefore is indicating to us that conditions are going to be established for a feminist, feminist revolution, because this is revolutionary stuff here, a feminist revolution in which when women dress like men, they do so in order to assume the functional role of men in society. How many women do you have in your cabinet? How many women do you have as judges? How many women are generals in the armed forces? The IMF is calling. The World Bank is calling. Washington is calling. You don't have enough women. You have to have some more women if you want us to help you. Put some more women in your cabinet. Hmm? Women would dress like men in order to assume the functional role of men in society. That's going to be an upside down world. Oh yes. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the male and who created the female. And he tells us that the creation of the male and the female I'm going to use a big word now. <laughs> the creation of the male and the female is analogous. Analogous, like an analogy. Hmm? Similar to. To the creation of the night and the day. To understand the male and the female, you must look to the night and the day. Where did he say that? Hmm? He says, بَعَدَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَيْلِي إِذَا يَغْشَى وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْثَى And he could have stopped there. The next one, he didn't actually need it. <laughs> because it's understood now. But the next verse he gave us, إِنَّ سَعَيَّكُمْ Lashatta. Allah takes an oath by the night and that with which it shrouds, it shrouds so mysteriously with such splendor, covers the night, covers the night, shrouds. وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى And then he takes an oath by the day and by its bright light, nothing covered, nothing mysterious, no. Everything open, nothing covered. وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنثَى Meaning, meaning what? That in the same way that I created the night and the day, 
so too did I create the male and the female. In other words, Allah wants the day to do the job of the day. And he wants the night to do the job of the night. وَجَعَلَّ اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسًا وَجَعَلَّ النَّهَارَ مَعَاشًا He now explains that I gave you the day for work, for toil. And I gave you the night as a cover for rest. Huh? And so the function of the day is different from the function of the night. And so men have a functional role in society different from women. Inna sa'ayakum lashatta That you are functionally different. Inna sa'ayakum lashatta The jar comes along and he says, no, 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 no. I'm going to take the night and make the night into day. He's done it in Singapore already. And he's doing it in Malaysia now. <laughs> and he's having some difficulties in Indonesia. This is the feminist revolution. This is our explanation for the modern Western feminist revolution the hakika the reality if you have a different explanation we'll be happy to hear it this is our explanation that the jal is the mastermind the feminist revolution not only turns the table upside down by creating now a dysfunctional family because mother and father are both working and so mother is now neglecting or abandoning her basic duties and function. Why? She can't go to work unless she has an Indonesian maid being paid a slave wage to take care of the home, to do the cooking, to take care of the children. So she's a part-time mother. And a baby will never forgive her for that neglect. Because when the babies grow up, they will deliver to their parents the same coins that were paid to them when they were children. They say, we don't have time now. You didn't have time for us. You had to go to work. You did not have time for us when we were children because you had to go to work. Why was it not possible for a father to work and earn an income to support us and you stay home with us? And you had to go to work. So we are busy now. So we take the old father and take the old mother and you put them in a home for old people. Daycare center for old people. Yeah. So don't cry now because you are now in a, a junkyard of human beings. You're being paid back for what you did to them when they were babies. This is the destruction of family. When you take your old father and old mother and put them in a junkyard for human beings, this is the destruction of family. But it's not only <coughs> the problem of the family and the problem of the economy, 